welcome to another evening of our Youth Week of Prayer. It is my pleasure to welcome you, whether you are in the sanctuary with us or online, wherever you are viewing from, I pray that tonight will be a blessing for you. We are worshiping under the theme, Walk as Children of the Light. And I pray that the Lord will surely bless you as you worship with us. At this time, we are going to have our praise and worship. So I invite the team to come on up as we sing praises to the Lord. Good night, everybody. The song says, press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear. Trials and crosses in our way. Pressing my way, I'm on my way to glory, and I feel like pressing my way. One more time, I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing, feel like pressing my way. I'm on my way to glory, and I feel like pressing my way. Press along, faith. Oh, I said to press along. Along in God's own way, press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear, trials and crosses in our way. Oh, the hot the battle, the sweet the
that he's a mighty warrior. He's great in battle. Jehovah is his name. If we can please stand for prayer. All right, let us pray. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to gather here once more again for this youth week of prayer. Lord, we pray that the young people have been blessed. Lord, we pray that you bless those that are speaking, those that are being, those that are taking part in the programs. Lord, we ask you to cover them in a special way that only you can cover them. I pray that you be with all the 
persons that come out to the evenings, I pray that their hearts will be blessed. Lord, be with our young people in a special way, those that are here and those that are not. Lord, I pray that you bring them to you. I pray that you send us out there to connect with others so that we can be a blessing in their lives. Help us to fulfill the work and the gospel in all the world, in each of our generations. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Scripture reading is taken from 1 Samuel 17, 36 through 50. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from um, the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him, clothed, clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his steel bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistine this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine arose and came, and drew near to David to meet David. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hands in his bag and took out a stone and slung it in and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. You may be seated. Now this is a portion of the service where everyone can participate, including those online. It is time for our offering. As we prepare to give to the Lord, I encourage those online to use Zelle or visit our church's website or you can mail checks to our church. All this information you can find in the description for the video you are watching. As we collect tonight's offering, we are going to sing this chorus and if you're here, help me to sing. Give it with love. Store it above, give through a willing heart. Give it with love. Store it above. Give it with the willing heart. Give it with love. Store it above. Give it with the willing heart. Give it with love. Store it above. Give it with the willing heart. Store it above, give it with the willing 
Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We want to thank you for giving us health and strength to be able to go out and work so that we can participate and contribute towards the ministry. Pray, God, that you will bless what has been collected tonight. May it go towards the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. The pleasure is mine this evening to introduce to you the speaker. He is one of our youth, one of our own. He is kind and has an amicable disposition. He's a trendsetter in his own right. He is an advocate for self-advancement. He believes in restorative action. He believes that punitive measures has its place, but restorative action reunites and finds solutions for from the inside out. He once was involved in a conflict with a student who physically attacked him. And his mom, she wasn't too happy with how he handled the situation. She said to him, why didn't you fight back? And his response was, that it would not be good for him to respond in that way because we should not use violence to solve violence. I think this, is, this was a really good response. I'm sure after Trish heard this, she wouldn't have any other response to give. He was determined to stomp out actions of violence in his own way. He is a new member of his school's basketball team and he'll be the first to say that he needs more practice. There's nothing wrong with that. He's an excellent team player and embodies good sportsmanship. In his free time, he likes to play video games with his friends and engage in conversations with his sister. He is a grandma's boy, and there's nothing wrong with that either. That's a good thing. His grandma, Sister Gardner, calls him every morning. She prays with him and consistently reminds him of God's love and encourages him to be his best self. His favorite scripture verse, guess where it's taken from? Joshua. Joshua 1, verse 9, verse 4 to 9, and it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua hopes to one day make it into the kingdom of God. Before Joshua comes, his sister, a newly baptized member of her congregation, Titania, is going to offer the song of meditation.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, good night. Um, walk as children of the light. Let's reflect on the biblical story of David and Goliath. It is a message about facing our giants and overcoming challenges that might serve as hindrances from fulfilling our God-ordained purpose. Let's turn our gaze to four primary principles that David used to defeat Goliath. One, denying self. Two, having the right attitude. Three, having faith. And four, trusting God. As we aspire to walk as children of the light, let's put on the spiritual breastplate of unwavering faith. You see, young David harnessed his faith in God before he even confronted the giant Goliath. Even as a youth, David had the assurance of God's omnipotence. In his demonstration of faith, in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, he said, You come out to fight me with a sword, a spear, and a dagger, but I've come out to fight you in the name of the Lord All-Powerful. As we face the giants in our lives, let's remember that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. There is no mountain too high enough that you cannot climb. There is no river too wide enough that you cannot cross. And there is no valley too deep, dark, and 
abysmal that you can't get through when you deny self, have faith, and trust God. Thank you, Dejanay, for your able reading of the sermonic text, 1 Samuel 17, verse 36 through 50. Also, Katanya, that was a wonderful um, song that you sung. Keep singing for Jesus. Please bow your head. Lord, please use me as a messenger of your word. Please speak to our hearts and remind us that we are children of the light and help us to practice the principles that David exemplified in honor of your name. I pray that everyone both here in the sanctuary and in cyberspace will be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name. I'd, I'd like to bring to your attention four principles that David exemplif- implemented in his quest to defeat Goliath, the Philistine, who antagonized God's people. Let me highlight the point that young David was a fierce defender of the people of Israel. One principle that he demonstrated is to, de- is to deny yourself and exalt the name of the Lord. David denies self by denouncing pride by rejecting the king's armor. The principle to deny self is evident in several biblical texts. One in particular grabs my attention. In Mark 8, verse 34, God said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. Jesus Jesus explains what true discipleship is really about self-denial and cross-bearing. The second principle that David used to defeat Goliath was that he had the right attitude. Having the right attitude is also a principle where many of us fall short. He had the right mindset. He was determined to fight for justice for God's children. You see, he had the right mindset from the moment his father, Jesse, had asked him to run an errand to the camp to take something to his brothers. He was obedient. He went on the errand with joy. He didn't murmur and complain. Sometimes, God causes us to be in certain places at the right time in order to fulfill his purpose. You see, God was sending David on a mission to deliver his people. David wasn't just a lad. He wasn't just a shepherd boy. He was just a busybody as his brothers described him. Sometimes, people will call you names for what you stand for or place you in a stereotypical box. Sometimes it's your very friends and family members, but we should honor God regardless of the pressures that you might face. One of his brothers said, why are you here, David, to watch the battle? In verse 1 Samuel 17, verse 25, when David asked to speak to Saul, they probably thought that he had lost his mind. Then he had the nerves to say that he wanted to fight Goliath the undisputed champion of his time. Mind you, he had no armor, no shield, no experience in the battlefield, except in the wild slaying bears and lions. While he was in the field tending to his sheep and warding off those predators, God was preparing him for the mission. It was God's pruning. We have to make ourselves available for God's pruning children of the light. Saints, In order to walk as children of the light, we have to always be prepared to be a vessel for God and to have the right attitude. David denounced self and put his trust in God. Saul questioned David's credibility. He looked down on him at first, then God touched Saul's heart. This was an unusual situation. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God specializes in unusual situations. David really didn't fit the bill, but he was willing to deny self, take up the cross, and avail himself to be used by God. Saul offered him his armor and sword, but it was too heavy, so David used a sling and a stone as his weapon of choice. Again, this is another deviation from the custom of battle. For emphasis, picture this. It is customary for men in preparation for battle to wear an iron or metal helmet to protect the skull from blunt force injuries. 
a metal breastplate for protection from being stabbed in the heart, which is usually lethal and leads to death. A shield to protect the warrior from the impact of an arrow, and of course a sword. Ironically, it was like suicide because David had none of these. In fact, he found them heavy and uncomfortable. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, David states, You come to fight me with a sword and a spear and a dagger, but I've come out to fight you in the name all-powerful. He is the Lord of Israel's army, and you have insulted him too. Like I said before, God specializes in unusual situations. To many of the onlookers, David was out of his mind. So you see, in denying self, you sometimes may have to deviate from certain social norms. Now, a deviation from social norms is not easy. We have the tendency to conform to special trends in order to fit in or, or to feel cool. But as children of the light, we have to operate as peculiar people. As children of the light, we have to rely on God and not our own understanding. A third primary principle that David exemplified was bring to mind a testimony in order to cultivate or and nurture your faith. The thing about faith is that you have to believe even when all odds are against you. It is blindly stepping into the unknown and claiming a reasonable outcome. It is a confidence believing that it's already finished. Now David developed his faith by bringing his testimony to mind. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, do you have a testimony to cultivate your faith? In verse 37, David said, The Lord has rescued me from the claws of lions and bears, and he will keep me safe from the hands of the Philistine. As children of the light, we have to exercise faith regardless of our circumstances. David used his testimony of God's protection and favor to apply it to his tumultuous situation. Notice that he stated, the Lord rescued him from the claws and of lions and bears. He didn't boast in himself. He boasted in God's power. He went on to say that he will keep me safe from the hands of the Philistine. He was confident that if God had rescued him from the hands of wild beasts, then God could give him dominion and, and victory over the adversary. Do you have a testimony to lean back on when your faith is being tested? To have faith, you need trust. You truly cannot have faith without trusting God. In fact, you need to have a certain degree of trust in order to have faith. I don't believe that David had a mustard seed type of faith. He spoke with confidence when he spoke to his brothers, Goliath and Saul. Now, the Bible states that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Can you imagine? As children of the light, we must have the assurance that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. We will have the assurance that I hath not seen nor heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Be steadfast and unmoving. Ask the Lord to be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. David obtained victory over the adversaries when even things seemed bliss because he thought after God trusted him and exercised his faith. In coming down, the fourth principle that David portrayed was do not be intimidated by the appearance of giants in your life. David's brothers did not trust that the younger brother could defeat the undisputed champion Goliath. He was not intimidated by the appearance of the giant Goliath. Jesus states in Matthew 19, verse 26, that with men, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. What an assurance. Walk, brethren, as children of the light. When you walk in the light, you don't have to fear. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 states, For God hath given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let's pray for God to help us to have the right attitude, cultivate trust, faith, 
and boldness like David as we face the giants in our lives. May God bless you. Straight to the point. Joshua reminded us that God specializes in unusual situations. He reminded us that sometimes we have to deviate from social norms. And I know sometimes this one is really hard because we feel like we're going to be out of place, but this is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to be set apart. And Joshua reminded us too that we should operate as peculiar people because that is who we are. We are supposed to be peculiar. We are God's chosen people. And so we should act accordingly. Faith is believing when all odds are against you. Sometimes you feel like you're backed up in a corner, things not working the way it should work, right? And we get flustered, but we should remember that that is when we should allow the Lord to lead. We should trust him because he always shows up for us. And the last one, Joshua, don't be intimidated by the giants in your life, right? The giants may look big, but guess what? When we measure the giants to our Lord, to our Savior, to our King, the giants really look small. Smile like an ant. <laughs> yes, God is good. He's amazing. He's wonderful. And we should serve him as though he is the light in our lives. Joshua, we want to thank you for the word that you have shared with us this evening. Yes, you did an awesome job. We have a lot to take away and we have a lot to think about and internalize, right? Just remember these points that Joshua wanted to share with us. We are going to sing hymn 590, Trust and Obey. Let's stand together.
going to pray for us. Sister Sims, I want you to pray that we will trust and obey. That we will ask the Lord to give us the strength that we need. That we will walk in his light so we can be his people and do what he requires and wants us to do. We'll sing the chorus again. Trust and obey. Amen. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I am asking all the youth to just come up a little closer. Come up a little closer as we pray. Then in fellowship suite, we will sit at his feet. Come on, don't be afraid to come. Come on. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, our Father in heaven, at this blessed moment of prayer I give you thanks for Jesus Christ who is the light of the world and as the song says walk in the light that beautiful light oh come with the dew drops of mercy shines bright. Shine all around us, yes, Lord. By day and by night, Jesus, the light of the world. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the way all you have led Joshua to present Oh, such a word. A word, hallelujah, telling us about the brevity of David facing Goliath. Lord, at this moment, as we look to you, please remember your people all around even at this time your people and all our youth who are somehow bogged down with fear i pray oh god that you will shine your light of brevity shine upon each one so that each one both young and old will know how to stand like the brave with their face to the foe. Hallelujah. Whatever darkness surrounds your people, even at this time, as we call upon the name of Jesus Christ, please disperse every dark areas hallelujah and set your people free let each one see your light and know that you are with them in a special way lord i present our youth oh god youth in every capacity lord youth who are surrounded with darkness darkness of fear darkness of 
doubt, darkness of suicide, darkness of loneliness, darkness of depression. Father, all kind of things that are faced with facing our youth, darkness of being a victim, whatever it is, Lord, low esteem, I call upon your mighty name, Jesus. Beat back these forces of evil, these dark forces. Let our youth see your glorious light. Let your our youth know how to be courageous like David and face these giants of darkness and come out con and come out more than conqueror in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah with your sweet Holy Spirit work upon each heart right now set each one free oh God God of heaven, our youth need you at this time. I pray, oh God, that you will bring about that great deliverance and set our youth free, set their parents free, set grandmothers free, set their siblings free, whatever is going on with our youth, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will help them to come out victorious glorious, confound and confuse the enemy right now Jesus overshadow every youth as you see each one standing before you you know what is going on in each one's life in each one's situation I pray that you will help them to overcome the enemy mighty God hallelujah be with them right now as you confound and confuse Satan as you bring out our children to great deliverance. Overshadow each and every one of us now with your love and your protection. Hide us now, God, under the shadow of your almighty wings. Keep us, dear Lord, as the apple of your eye. Help our youth now to study your word more to be on their knees more to learn how to trust you how to obey you hallelujah how to overcome the evil one who will try to allow them into doing all kind of things that are against you help them lord to just trust you and obey you and this is how I know they will come out more than conquerors so cover them all under your precious blood hallelujah help them Lord to just overcome as they continue to trust you and walk by your side thank you for hearing thank you for answering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray amen Joshua, can you come up here, please? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Joshua. Okay. On behalf of the AY department, we would like to present this to you. I know being a teenager, it's hard, but when you feel like you're being have, experiencing a lot of challenge and fears, we refer back to your sermon, because it touched, all right? You're welcome. Thank you, Sister Altine. We want to thank you for joining us for our Youth Week of Prayer service tonight. I hope that you have been blessed, because I have been blessed, right? Wherever you're joining us from, if you have been viewing, continue to do so. Join us again online tomorrow 
Join us again tomorrow online for Proclaim and Praise as our pastor and his wife leads us in a wonderful discussion. All right? Um, the rest of us will be back in the sanctuary on Friday at 7. So invite a friend and tell that friend to invite a friend and bring several friends and family members and come out and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Have a good night and God bless you.